There's this pitcher in New York who's considered the greatest of all time. And no Mets fans, I'm not talking about Jacob deGrom. I'm talking about Mr. Unanimous, Mariano Rivera. The all-time saves king and postseason ERA leader in Rivera is widely regarded as the best relief pitcher in baseball history, and there's really no one to contend him for that crown. But what makes him even more special is that he accomplished his success with basically one pitch that famous cutter. His cutter would ride in on lefties and away from righties and was notorious for snapping bats like toothpicks. Just ask Ryan Klesko, who broke three in one at-bat against Rivera during the 99 World Series. Rivera's cutter was a work of art. It was so simple, yet so effective, that no one could hit it during his nearly 20-year big league career. Funny part was that hitters knew what they were going to get from Rivera and still couldn't hit it. His cutter was so good, in fact, that Roy Halladay approached Rivera during the 2008 All-Star Game and asked him how to throw it. So Rivera traced a baseball with his grip and gave it to Doc. That pitch helped shape the latter part of Halliday's career, and the baseball now resides in the Hall of Fame, along with both of their plaques. Now, there is another pitcher currently in New York that is known for one pitch, and that's Zach Britton. Britton, like Rivera, is a failed starter who has moved to the bullpen and hopes to redeem his career, a move that has worked out and then some. Unlike Rivera, however, Britton isn't known for snapping bats or saving games anymore. He's a unique pitcher who relies on ground balls and soft contact as opposed to overpowering and striking out hitters like Rivera did. Since he made the move to the bullpen in 2014, Britton has been statistically the best pitcher in baseball, and I'm not just talking out of the bullpen. He's been the most valuable and most reliable man to toe up the rubber for the past seven seasons, doing so with the most effective pitch in baseball, his signature sinker. Let's take a look at Rivera's cutter and Britain's sinker side by side. Obviously, these are different pitches with different movements coming at you from different sides of the mound, but their premise is essentially the same. For about 55 feet, Rivera's cutter looks like a straight fastball. Then, out of seemingly nowhere, it snaps to the left and darts away from the hitter's barrel. Hence why Rivera was famous for breaking so many bats over the course of his career. Britain's sinker has a similar effect. The sinker comes in a few miles an hour harder than Rivera's cutter, but it also has that late deceptive movement. It comes in like a fastball, but just as the hitter goes to swing, it darts down and nearly disappears from your view. Look at how the batter's out on this front side. A swing like that is the result of a batter knowing he's being fooled by a pitch and trying to abandon his mechanics in order to make contact. Call it an emergency swing, if you will. It's not something that's taught or should be taught by hitting coaches across the country. It's simply a reaction, and a negative one, to stay alive in the box. When a hitter sacrifices his mechanics, in order to make contact, if they make it at all, it doesn't produce good results for them. When Britain gets a hitter out in front like that, a ground ball normally isn't too far behind. Since StatCast began tracking launch angles in 2015, Britain has produced an average launch angle of negative 7.3 degrees, meaning that every ball that comes off the bat while Britain is pitching is likely to be pounded straight into the ground. So essentially, the man is a human fungo bat, and that late movement and deception is a big reason for that. Now, hitting the ball on the ground isn't necessarily a bad thing. In fact, the hardest hit ball in StatCast history was a ground ball off the bat of Britain's now teammate in Giancarlo Stanton. But hitters generally view ground balls as outs. With the way the big league hitters are literally crafting and reworking their swings in order to swing up at the baseball, a ball on the ground is considered to be negative feedback. Josh Donaldson said it best here. In the big leagues, these things that they call ground balls are outs. Yeah, they don't pay. They don't pay you for ground balls. They pay you for doubles. They pay you for homers. But just how effective has Britain's sinker been over the course of his career? It turns out it's arguably the single best pitch in the game since his relief duties began in 2014. But before we can talk about Britain's dominance closing out games, we need to first look at his failure to start them and how he became the force we know him as today. The Orioles drafted a young Britain out of high school in 2006 with the intentions of having him anchor their rotation for years to come. And in 2011, he made his first career starts for the Birds. Over three injury-plagued seasons as a starter, Britain would pitch to an 18-17 record with a 4.77 ERA across 254 rather unimpressive innings. It was safe to say that the early part of Britain's career didn't quite pan out as the Orioles had hoped. The funny thing was that the best part of Britain being a starter was him at the plate as opposed to being on the mound. In eight career at-bats, all of which came during the 2011 season, Britain picked up five base knocks, including a double and a dinger, while only striking out one time in his first career at-bats. In fact, Britton owns the highest batting average and OPS plus of any player in Major League Baseball history with at least eight plate appearances. Given that's an extremely small sample size, but it's very impressive nonetheless. After the Orioles traded away Jim Johnson, the two-time reigning saves leader and former All-Star closer following the 2013 season, that closer role was wide open, and they decided that Britton would be the man for the job. Not only would Britton exceed expectations out of the bullpen, 
but he would establish himself as the single best relief pitcher in baseball. The goal of a pitcher is pretty simple. It's to prevent the offense from scoring and Britton has been the best in the league since moving to the bullpen. Of pitchers with at least 100 innings pitched since 2014, Britton's first season out of the bullpen, his 184 ERA is the lowest in the major leagues by far, ahead of the man he currently sets up in New York in a role as Chapman. If Britton had started his career out of the bullpen and continued the pace he's currently on, his 184 ERA would be second in Major League Baseball history and only one of four players with a career ERA under 2.0. Britton also sets up Chapman in ERA+, plus, with Britton posting an incredible 2.30 and Chapman not too far behind. Mariano Rivera owns the Major League record for highest ERA+, plus at 2.05, and Britton easily crushed that during his career as a relief pitcher thus far. Despite being a setup man for Chapman and occasional fill-in closer over the past two and a half seasons, his 153 saves are seventh most in baseball since 2014. But before he was traded to the Yankees, Britton put together one of the most incredible seasons in baseball history for the Orioles in 2016, which unfortunately is remembered for him not pitching in the wildcard game instead of his dominant regular season performance. That season saw Britton set a couple of major league records and break an American league record in one of the best seasons from a closer in baseball history. Britton put together arguably the greatest single season pitching performance in Major League Baseball history back in 2016. He allowed just four earned runs across 67 innings of work to the tune of a .54 ERA, the lowest single season ERA of any pitcher with at least 50 innings pitched in a season. His ERA plus, which mind you the league averages 100, was a staggering 803, the highest ever single season ERA plus in the history of baseball. From May 5th through August 22nd of that season, Britton didn't allow a single earned run. In doing so, he set the Major League Baseball record for consecutive relief appearances without an earned run allowed with 43. Over those 41 in the third innings, he held hitters to just a 383 OPS, and basically anytime he entered the ballgame, the other team was already heading to the clubhouse. He struck out 74 while converting all 47 of his save opportunities in 2016, the middle part of his 60 consecutive saves he converted from 2015 to 2017, which is the longest streak in American League history and second in Major League Baseball history only behind Eric Gagne's legendary 84-game streak in the early 2000s. Britain's historic season saw him finish fourth in the AL Cy Young Award voting and led the Orioles to the AL wildcard game, which we all remember how that went. Obviously, Orioles fans weren't happy when Ubaldo Jimenez was brought into the game instead of Britain and promptly gave up a walk-off nuke to Encarnacion. Even Britain himself had a little fun on Twitter after Major League Baseball tried to auction off his game-used jersey from that game. Game-used being the key word. It really should have been a no-brainer that Britain would have been brought into that game in that situation because they needed Encarnacion to hit a ground ball so they could turn two. And ground balls are exactly what Britain specializes in. Similar to another Yankees relief pitcher, Britain is dominated out of the pen with the use of basic basically just one pitch that no one seems to be able to hit. Britain's pitch arsenal has varied slightly over the years, but one thing has remained true, and that's his sinker's dominant and his slider's effective when he needs it to be. Since 2014, Britain has thrown primarily sinkers and sliders with a rare four-seam fastball mixed in here and there. Of the 5,773 pitches he's thrown, 90% of those have been sinkers. He seems to subscribe to the philosophy that he's going to make hitters prove that they can beat his best pitch before moving on to his secondary, and their failure to beat his sinker is the reason that he keeps throwing it over and over again. Since 2014, in at-bats ending with a sinker thrown, batters are hitting just 206 against him, and he's allowed only 14 home runs and nearly 1,100 at-bats. If hitters seem to know that a sinker's coming at them, then why can't they hit it? The answer is similar to why no one could hit Rivera's cutter that hard, late movement. His sinker averages around 24 and a half inches of vertical break, about 20% better than the league average, and comes in anywhere from 94 to 98 miles an hour. And that break comes just as the hitter has to make a decision as to whether to swing or not, making it tough to judge just where exactly it'll end up. I mean, hitting's tough enough, but his sinker's harder than most pitchers' fastballs and breaks sharply at the last possible second, resulting in a lot of awkward swings and ground balls. Britton isn't known for being a power pitcher, averaging less than a strikeout per inning in his career, but he's still able to get outs through ground balls and that soft contact we were talking about. Britton drops his sinker in the lower third of the zone with regular consistency and lets his natural movement do the rest. He's produced at least a 70% ground ball rate in all seven of his seasons since becoming a full-time reliever, nearly doubling the average league rates each year. This elite ground ball rate also helps prevent inherited runners from scoring, 
and he usually comes out of innings with a zero on the scoreboard. He's been one of the best at preventing runs, stranding nearly 80% of them during the course of his career in the bullpen. The recent trend in launch angle and exit velocity has only made Britain's value greater. There are a limited number of pitchers who specialize in keeping the ball on the ground, and Britain is the best in the game at it. With hitters going up to the plate having the I'm gonna drive this ball mindset, only to be met with hard, deceptive downward movement, can really throw off an approach at the plate for not only their at-bat against Britain, but any at-bat moving forward for that game. Britain is able to not only alter the innings in which he pitches, but also subsequent innings due to the unusual nature of how he gets outs. Because of the way Britain forces hitters to change their approach in order to try and beat him. It's really remarkable what Zach Britton's been able to do. He's had to reinvent himself numerous times over the course of his career, from a failed starter, to an all-star closer, to a setup man, it hasn't really been an easy road for him. He's battled through injuries to get where he is today, and that's literally the most effective pitcher in the game of baseball. He doesn't allow runners to score and poses a challenge for hitters when they come up to the plate, and that's how they're going to get underneath a sinking baseball that's nearly impossible to swing under. Zach Britton has dominated hitters over the past seven seasons with only one pitch in his arsenal, and it looks like he won't need to add another for a long time.